Bringing in our new guest, he was in the streets there with us in D.C. in California. Uh, he's been one of the, the the most well-known Assange advocates I've known for quite some time. Uh, I did a show with him in the morning. He's still rocking it every single morning, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. on the West Coast. So he's got to get up really early. Luckily, he has Gomez to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, my good friend Steve Poikinen joins the show. What's happening, man? How's it going? Uh, I thought I could cheer you up uh, if you were down to show you Magnus on a scooter in D.C., right? I, <laughs> I know we always talk about what a sweetheart Magnus is, how much we love him, and that's still always one of my favorite kind of shots. There's all of us there. There's Glory Jones in the streets. There's you. Uh, Misty was all a part of it. You saw people from uh, Roar Magazine, Shan the Master, Amber King, uh, Johnny Tsunami, Kimmy Iverson showed up. Ron Pacone was there at that one point. There was a lot of us back in the days. Uh, it's kind of surreal, really, that I'm talking to you today because now Assange has gotten on a plane. He's flown back to Australia. I know that Jamie uh, Don DeBar sent something over if you want to kind of pull that up and look at that at any time. But let's let's hear from the man himself, my good friend Steve Poikinen, on what his just your initial thoughts and feelings are. I know you did a show this morning, T-Lab Tuesday, and I heard that Whitney joined. I didn't get to see it. But just give us your thoughts now. Uh, it's less than 24 hours later. Uh, this is a guy who you spent a lot of time, Steve, a lot of resources, a lot of energy fighting for. Uh, your just initial thoughts right now, uh, now that he's free. I mean, so the the plea deal itself was something that we had heard was potentially in the works. Like it had been confirmed that, uh, as far as the U.S. government side that they'd drawn one up. Uh, the initial observations that we heard uh, from the Assange team were that they, they weren't on board with it. Um, <clears throat> but when you read it, I, and I've looked everywhere, man. I, and if anybody has seen something to the contrary, please let me know. I can't find a single word or a sentence that says uh, when he walks out of the courtroom in the Marianas Islands, because why wouldn't the U.S. have a district court in the Marianas Islands? Why, why wouldn't we? You know, but when he walks out of the courtroom there, um, there are zero conditions. There's no probation. There's no parole. There's no, you don't, you, he, d theoretically, he could go from the courtroom to the sidewalk, get handed a phone and start trading crypto on the dark web. Theoretically, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that anyone should do that. What I'm saying is there's zero words in the paperwork to the contrary to say that he's not allowed uh, near a computer. Remember how they were trying to make him a notorious hacker? Well, that's not a part of the plea deal. Um, conspiracy to disseminate classified information is a charge along with mishandling classified information that the United States government has before this only been able to uh only been able to levy against a contractor or a direct employee. So what that may be saying really sounds like it's saying pasta is that Rick, the janitor, Debbie, the teacher, Frank, the truck driver, or anyone anywhere on the planet, because Julian Assange is not a U.S. citizen, anyone anywhere on the planet can be hit with espionage act charges if they ha conspire to share or disseminate classified information that could be linking to a website that has classified documents that could be linking to, you know, pasta to go. If you pull up vault seven one day or something like that, yeah, yeah. It, you know, that's, that's what that, I mean, that's what that says. There's a lot of people are taking victory laps right now that had nothing to do with this because uh, it looks like journalists got, you know, some relief here. And that's true. If you're a journalist, you probably do have some relief out of this, except for because the whole case against Julian was that he's not a journalist. He's a, you know, private rogue individual who took it upon himself to illegally obtain this information. And that's why we're going after him. 
right? We, yep, we yep. let the Washington Post off. New York Times was fine. You can have a secure drop link uh, for every major publishing outlet on the planet and openly solicit this kind of information. If you go to the Washington Post right now, they, they have a secure drop link where whistleblowers can, you know, drop off information. They're fine. But what it what the charges are uh, and what, you know, the plea deal is, well, we have to assume then that that applies to literally every citizen on the planet, regardless of where you live. The United States is claiming they have jurisdiction over you and can give you an espionage act charge because prior to this, the only people that they could even charge with mishandling classified information like that were, was one of their own contractors. They tried to initially go after the Washington Post with the Pentagon Papers, but they never tried to go after WikiLeaks in this prosecution as the publishing outlet. Yeah. So the, it's an imbalance of charges or imbalance of application if they're trying to charge them with the same thing they charged the post with, why why not charge WikiLeaks? Why are you charging a private citizen? The only reason you would charge a private citizen is if you're trying to then charge every single other private citizen that you selectively want to go after. Yeah. So you you would say often, right? Like, and I think you said it a couple of times, and I I used to echo this all the time when I would try to explain to people why Julian Assange is so important. Right. Because I used to say they're not going after Julian Assange. They're coming after all of us. They're just using Julian Assange to get to us. That was something I heard you say, Misty say. Uh, with this happening the way it does, are you insinuating or are you stating plainly that even though it might have been a goal to torture Assange and make sure that he die in jail? Right. To send a, a message to anybody out there who wants to expose the government. There still is a victory for the intelligence apparatus, the ruling class, the deep state, whoever's pulling the strings of power with this decision, even though Julian Assange gets sent home because the deal they had made to free him. Yeah. And let's I mean, you know, for first and foremost, very, very glad that Julian Assange will have the opportunity to watch his sons grow up. You know, that, that's all. That, yes. that's amazing. Like it's so much better than the alternative that most of us thought was coming, regardless of whether they killed him in Belmarsh or, you know, he wound up in a supermax. So much better. Very, very glad that he gets to, you know, go be with his family. Having awesome. said that, if you go back to the original Strat 4 reports, where it was like, this is what we need to do about the WikiLeaks problem. This is how we're going to go after them. This is where we get the, um, you know, move them from place to place for the next 25 years and all that kind of stuff. Scatter his assets and, you know, make sure that uh, everybody that he knows gets messed with, too. All of that effectively happened. The transition from and we were talking about this this morning uh, went about 10 minutes into going live. Uh, Whitney hit me up. And was like, hey, I would like to pop in, as she is wont to do a few times out of the year. You know, she hasn't done a live show in several months. It was really cool to have her on. But she brought up that um, <clears throat> not only has there not been like a leaks based journalist, journalistic outlet in the last five years, five and a half years almost. Um, they're, they're, the way that we've changed what journalism is, is so far and away from primary source documentation, good screenshots that get confirmed by lawyers, bad, that now we Matt Taibbi's not here to confirm and to protect himself, even though he won't take a, an interview with us, <laughs> You're talking about, I think this is important to point out, they're talking about what journalism is. Like, mm. everybody gets hyped on the Twitter files, and it's screenshots without source material. That's what you're alluding to, to what the opposite of WikiLeaks did, which would actually bring you the source documentation that says, look, uh, so I'm sorry to interrupt, but please continue. No, you're, you're absolutely correct. And yeah, the, we've gone from here's the documentation, you read through it, 
You figure out what it means to you. I'm sure there'll be people that you check in with that are doing the same to here's a picture. This picture was cleared by the legal department before the journalists got a hold with it to decide which ones they wanted to use to help sell their story. You know, that that's so far removed from what everybody even grew up believing journalism to be all the people that go to J school and walk out of there and get plugged into mainstream or mainstream alternative media positions. All of those people legitimately think they're going in to be journalists. They don't, I I don't, I really find it hard to believe that the overwhelming majority of Ivy League college students that enroll in a journalism school program think they're going in to be a propagandist. I don't I don't believe that. I believe they think they're going to be journalists, but the way that they're taught how to be journalists is so contradictory from what everyone understands a journalist's job to be. And, so I have to ask you though, and I have to stop because I just you know I love your brain. Why do they make that decision then? What's the triggering factor in their brain that says, okay, you know what? I'm going to play ball. I'm going to be a propagandist instead. Because they, I think they all, a lot of these people who are in journalism today, they realize that they are there because they went along. What made them trigger in their brain if they went in kind of open, like, I want to do real journalism too? Hey, I'm a paid propagandist, but yeah, I'm a, a, a heavily paid propagandist, so fine with it. Well, most of them never get to that spot, man, to where you're a heavily paid propagandist. Most of them are producing a segment that they had three hours to prepare for, that they had a whole bunch of people they had to contact for, that they had to line out people for hair and makeup for. If you're the person who got the hair and makeup done to you, then you had 35 minutes to prepare you know, Allison Morrow talks about this. We're like, she would get an email in the morning. We need 750 words on this. Here's the uh, relevant articles about it. Not anything primary source. Here's the relevant articles. You can grab two poll quotes from these five, any two of these five people. We need this on our desk you know, by X amount of time. And if it's something to where she had to like hop in a car and call her camera operator and go do a report for, like it was even more of crunch time. And that's how it's so assembly line, Henry Ford manufactured formulaic that quite on, like my opinion about this is it has evolved quite a bit over the years. The more, the more people that come from the mainstream to try to do independent media, the more I realize that like they're literal cogs in a machine. Most of these people have n- very little contact with any of the, any of the individuals they're getting their information from. Not only that, but they pack together when they go out. So they're in a like completely reinforcing bubble. Yeah. Everybody's talking about yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's so like a, on a level, you really can't fault somebody for not even being let in the club enough to know that the club's weird. Like the compartmentalization it, it has been handled on that level, and the right hand has no idea what the left hand is doing. You know, yeah. so it, it granted they're soulless, dead eyed greedy people in every industry and every profession that know exactly what they're doing, know exactly why it should be them that should get that big paycheck because they're going to dance better than all of the rest of these other clowns are going to dance. And you see them get elevated into various positions uh, of prominence in whatever atmosphere they're trying to get elevated in, whether it's TV, film, music it doesn't matter like there there are those people that are just like yeah i've figured out the code as far as this goes i'm i'm gonna go ahead and do it you know i i still kind of fall back on like listen just tell the truth don't bullshit don't say stuff just because somebody told you to say it and eventually that will lift you to where you need to be lifted to right like people are going to matriculate towards the truth 
uh, rather than just being playing team sports and going along. Because there's plenty of other people who just go along and say the shit to say the shit, and people will follow them for that. They'll give them their confirmation bias. Let, let's talk a bit about the agreement that Julian made right now. You, you got to look at it. Can he practice journalism ever again? Is there conditions that were made in this agreement that says you can't go buy a computer, you can never use YouTube no. again? If we see you on Rockfin on Slow News Day, we're going to come back and put you back in Belmarsh. Have there been any agreements with that whatsoever? Have you seen? No, not nary, nary a one. The yeah. to the does that best... make you suspicious? <sighs> Look, man, I, <laughs> you know me, but I, to the best of my ability, I haven't <laughs> found a word that has said anything other than he is a 100% free man when he walks out of the door after pleading guilty to this mishandler conspiracy to disseminate classified information charge. He pleads guilty to that. They give him time served. Time served means you have served your time free to go. I didn't see a word about a tale for people who haven't been involved in the American penal system before a tale is probation or parole. Haven't seen a word about that. Uh, haven't seen a word about you can't go near this. I'm, I wasn't kidding earlier when I said somebody could hand him a phone and he could hop right on the dark web and start trading unsecured crypto. But theoretically. Again, okay. not suggesting Julian Assange nor anyone else do that. Just saying there so far, there's nothing to say. You can't do interviews. You can't go on a speaking tour. You can't have 35 documentaries made about you. None of that is there. And I would imagine that all of that is going to happen. All right. Let me ask you this question. So I, when we did the morning show, and I did it with you on AM Wake Up. It's a very vibrant audience, very smart audience. You can take down the, does M mainstream media journalists know? Okay, so here's the question I have for you. I want you to play devil advocate. You say, I know you. Yeah, I do. Let me, let me phrase this in a way I won't get you in too much fucking trouble, right? There are a lot of people on the AM Wake Up morning chat that would say, not a lot, but there was a few here and there that says Assange, is an asset of the United States. Assange is an asset of the CIA. What exactly are they talking about? Uh, can you put that together? Because you saw a lot of their questions, and I would ask you, like, what is this person saying? What are they insinuating, and how and why? So, asset. okay, the, the the varying theories circulate. There's uh, one about julian being raised in uh a like mk ultra style the family style cult um there which is what what certainly like you know lets a lot of people jump to whatever conclusions they want to um there's the uh when he was in australia um, he worked directly with the Australian feds and, and police as part of like a pedophile hunting thing. Okay. Um, and so having established a relationship with the intelligence community while being a, at the time, you know, black hat hacker, this is a decade prior to the founding of WikiLeaks. Um, that's a jumping off point where people are like, oh, well, you know, then 10 years later, he just happens to create uh, uh, what they'll, they'll call yeah, yeah. a leak honey pot, you know. Um, I, in a lot, uh, a lot of ways similar to what The Intercept did and was, where, um, it, and they did, the money for WikiLeaks didn't come from, you know, Pierre Omidyar or any other direct... Uh, I guess, financier of color revolutions. Um, but you've got people like John Young from Cryptome, uh, who still w was like, which I would imagine is online as of today or will be online when Julian walks out of the courtroom because Cryptome was taken offline um, until Julian Lassange was released. After 
John Young was like, hey, I published the unredacted Cablegate files that your buddy from The Guardian published the password in in his book. I published all of this unredacted stuff. I have the complete, you know, this, that, and the third. Send me a freaking subpoena. S indict me. Charge me as a co-conspirator with Julian Assange. I dare you. Put me on the stand, buddy. And they were like, uh-uh, we're not going to. We're not going to do that. Why? Um, why is that? <laughs> the, I don't know. I don't like. I really don't. have a theory, though. I can see in your eyes. I, I'm or... just. I. The only reason the U.S. government doesn't want to put somebody on a witness stand is because they know exactly what they're going to say, and they're very, very, very afraid that that would ever show up in a freaking court report. So whatever it is that they're afraid that John Young is going to say, it was enough for them to not charge him ever. And I mean, ever. The very first time the Obama administration was talking about going after WikiLeaks, nary a letter to Cryptome or Pirate Bay, for that matter. Um, it, so there, there's a, I mean, you know, so th these are some of the things people point what to. What exactly did they do that would make them culpable and the united states government wanting to go after that please explain to the audience that might not know if you're well the thing that julian assange is per right now pleading out to which is conspiring to disseminate classified information but they directly disseminated classified information and openly courted uh as much uh you know legal or extra legal sourcing as possible for that material who Pirate Bay, Crypto, and WikiLeaks. I just you made know. you say it again so I can clip it up, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> yeah. No, that's that's fine. I mean, so the, there's, there's that. There's uh, a handful of other things. The problem is, as the problem often is, you're never going to find a piece of paper that is the original asset agreement between julian paul assange and fill in whatever intelligence agency you want to you're never going to find it you're just not just like you're never going to find the hitman contract for whoever's you know the dude who shot kennedy you're never going to you're never going to hear the phone call where all of this stuff gets planned out you find out some stuff after the fact that you have to wait another five or six years for a court case to happen before you get court testimony that this thing actually happened before the vast majority of people are going to believe it anyway and that's just you know that's the way it works let me bring you to uh mainstream level where i know you hate to play uh, there's good. There's a little bit of arguments out there right now. Some people are trying to, you know, Biden people are trying to take credit for what's going on. Uh, what are your initial thoughts when you see this? I know you, like I said, I, I probably couldn't, you probably couldn't even remember the last time you watched a mainstream media show or even just checked out what they're doing and stuff. But there is this argument out there that Biden is going to get credit, right? Like in other words, Donald Trump said he would free Ross Ulbrich at the libertarian convention. Uh, we all know that Biden didn't want to deal with this, but is he going to be able to play this as a victory lap? Or more importantly, does this hurt Donald Trump being the one that he didn't free him during his uh, his, his okay. uh, presidency? Go ahead, buddy. Are, are people are people so dense that they're not understanding that this is the Biden administration getting Julian Assange to admit to a crime that he didn't commit? Like yes, that, they are that's that like that then people that play in the mainstream need to hammer home this point. It's still a conviction. The Biden administration didn't drop charges. Trump could still come in and pardon Julian Assange because he's been charged and sentenced to conspiring to disseminate classified material if the argument is joe biden helped save journalism you're full of it you're absolutely full of it because joe biden got a spent the entire case saying the guy wasn't a journalist and then when it came time to charge him set a brand new precedent that any private citizen 
could be charged that way unless somebody comes up and shows you paperwork that Julian Assange was a government contractor because that's the only way that the charge existed before this. So either the precedent has been set that all private citizens can be charged this way or the way that journalism has been shifted into the realm of screenshots or like, like I said, dude, there's so many wins for the establishment on this. The most, you know, at the time dangerous leak based journalistic outlet was off the playing field during COVID during January 6th, during the entire, that entire election, not to mention all of the, freaking shenanigans that went down in the midterms everything that's happened with the trump trials this that and the other there's no outlet that exists where people are comfortable taking this material to going i could really blow the lid off of this but we're seeing court case after court case after court case i think you guys talked about kansas chris kobach and all that stuff and where had there been an outlet that had international trust and a sizable following and people could have taken material to at the time, maybe we wouldn't have to wait four or five years for these court cases. Maybe we could have shut it down in real time. You know, I, I'd like to get your little quick opinion, too, about the uh, whole situation uh, with the Kansas uh attorney general really quickly because i keep on saying to people well you know to me this is like yeah, yeah all right it's a it's a little win right like they're going after them for that's essentially for damage that can be done from the shot itself they're going after them for misleading the public and it's only pfizer only but they didn't attack the whole system itself right why in fact the government was able to do the things they want to do can you were telling me the other day we were talking about this briefly can you give me your little insight to the Steve Poikin and takedown of what this actual lawsuit from the Kansas City, the Kansas Attorney General means. What, more importantly, what's missing, Steve? Well, Moderna's missing. It, <laughs> that's the, I mean, ultimately, and Moderna is the company that started because DARPA, the Defense Agency Research Group, did, they wanted a vaccine company. And they wanted a vaccine company that specifically created the modern RNA based vaccines. So Moderna, that's modern. Where, <laughs> yeah, mo modern RNA. And the, those are the products that they were created that Moderna itself was tasked to create when, again, DARPA said we need you know an organization in-house that does this they have been almost entirely uh unincluded from all of these conversations even the ones on uh in all of the congressional hearings largely left out of the conversations been focused heavily on pfizer um I think that it's going to be, it, and again, all of this is happening as Moderna just got approved to start manufacturing a, a bird flu product. So, yeah, and, and the, you did mention too, as well, when Dr. McCullough was on the morning show, how J and J was the fall guy. Now it feels like it's Pfizer's turn to be the fall guy. Well, this. and they and, can and throw Pfizer. They can throw Pfizer under the bus, too, because Pfizer operates in so many other countries. Granted, they're in some hot water in uh, Japan, too, and a couple other countries. So this could very easily be uh, a market correction that's happening behind the scenes where a number of keyed in insiders have recognized that this particular brand is going downhill on an international level and it may be in everyone's best interest if we start to sever ties with them we've got a guaranteed product from this company that's already part of the you know the the public part of the public private partnership and and so yeah, there's a little bit more secure investment with moderna than there would be for Pfizer, because, again, Pfizer's experiencing some significant lawsuits in a number of different countries right now. 
So yeah, multiple throwing did, under the bus. Every tire you, getting them. You did, and going back to the Trump Biden question, you did harm home, hammer home that Biden got Julian Assange to admit to a crime he never committed of sorts, right? And the victories that came out of this, we talked about it in the beginning of the show. Do you think, though, in the public eye that Trump lost a lot for not pardoning himself? I mean, obviously, I think that we have a lot of us that felt like he was told uh, that if you pardon Julian Assange, we'll impeach you. And you won't be able to run for president again. I, I know that was that kind of talk. But uh, do you not look at this as a lost opportunity? I'm sure your brain is somewhere else. And maybe it, can enlighten us a so, bit. OK, the, of course, if Trump wanted to pardon Julian Assange, he would have. But those aren't the people he pardoned financial criminals and war criminals. He did not Hip-hop have artists. any. Yeah. You know, and, and a couple of rappers. Yeah. Yeah. For the street cred. And now, yeah, you the know, street cred. <laughs> yeah. And, and now the streets <laughs> love him again because 34 convictions, three baby mamas. All he needs is some waves and he'll be in there. He'll be at the cookout, but it's not the, I, of course, if he wanted to pardon him, he would have, but if he wanted to pardon him, he never would have made anyone like Elliot Abrams or John Bolton or Mike Pompeo or any of these other goons, a part of his administration, you know, and he did that. And, and so, well, I, you know, they threw General Flynn in jail. They accused him of all of his stuff. That's what have been his original choice, Steve. So you know what I'm saying? It was like, not his own fault. That, the people that would be mad at Donald Trump for uh, the perceived, whatever perceived win or missed opportunity this was probably aren't going to vote for him anyway. Or it, that's not going to be enough for them to go vote for Joe Biden. You, you know, like, so as far as political damage, it's minimal. It, it's not going to be something that would impact his ability to participate in a consent ritual for bloodline kid diddlers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, final thoughts on Julian Assange being freed before we get out of here. Everybody, I want you to go to see, uh, go to Steve stuff. Let everybody know where they can find you. Uh, and then the, just the final message you have for the audience out there now that Julian is free. I, what I understand is that he's going to uh, Saipan Island. Is that what it's called? Saipan Island or whatever it is. It's a U.S. territory in which he'll have to go into that courtroom, handle business, and then eventually he'll be on his way to Australia. Some people have said, including the engineer of this show, Cheese Slice, that he shouldn't go stay anywhere in a Five Eyes country. Like He should go join Snowden and in russia your thoughts as far as that goes uh you know you can you're still allowed to hire your own private security if you live in a five eyes country and if you've got good five you know if you've got good private security then you can be relatively comfortable anywhere and i would rather be relatively comfortable where it's not freezing cold yeah uh, the like uh, all, all the time um, but no, I mean, it, he'll make, he'll make most of his own decisions. I would imagine that. Um, and, and I really think it's going to be interesting to see how this develops over the next few months, few years. There's a lot of ways it could go. Um, having said that they're all infinitely preferable to the ways that we all thought it was going to go. Very glad he's back with his family. Um, I think that most of the damage that they were looking to do uh, to journalism has been done. I think most of the damage to creating a centralized control grid over the Internet that will create what Julian called a filter verse of one has been put in place. Uh, I would love to hear and will be very interested to hear what Julian has to say about Elon Musk and what X is um, the, as far as uh, any of my stuff goes, amwakeupshow.com. If anyone is listening in the Denver, Colorado Springs or Pueblo area, 4th of July weekend at the blowback gallery in Pueblo, Colorado, uh, July 5th and July 6th. We're doing it huge. We have 12 bands and a half a dozen speakers, couple of panels, um, food, 
Uh, the blowback has a liquor license. There will be games. Um, there's a art show that kicks the whole thing off. All of this. Uh, if you're out of town, 35 bucks for the weekend. If you're local, 30 bucks for the weekend. Again, 12 bands, half a dozen speakers. Uh, all of the artists are in the same relative um, like media space and uh, uh, headspace as you know the, the people who um, frequently stop by the show. Great local artists, every genre of music except for pop country being represented. Yeah. Is that a way, your way of saying you're looking for a pop country band? Because I know some guys. I'll make them tell them call Steve. And get in so that we are thing. we are going to be accepting submissions for <laughs> next year very very soon. But there will be a three panel jury, so I can't with any certainty say whether or not we'll have one next year. But feel free to submit, and, yeah. and I'm sure we'll all we'll all get a kick out of listening to it. What kind of food, Steve? Um, there's a couple of different food trucks, and then uh, the Jason Rick from Rick Ranches, who's a, a beef initiative partner, um, will be coming through. So we'll be uh, barbecue, Mexican, all kinds of, all kinds of. It's Pueblo, Colorado. There's bound to be a Mexican food truck, even if there's not one associated with the carnival. There's going to be four or five Mexican food trucks within walking distance. I promise. I promise. Pueblo, baby. We love it. We love you, Steve. Thank you so much for coming on. It was great seeing you again, brother. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people have been saying congratulations uh, uh, about Julian Assange. You did some amazing work for so long. Um, so thank you, uh, at the very least, for teaching us, I think, about what Julian Assange stood for, what it was all about, how important it was. Um, you're amazing. And I look forward to seeing you soon, brother. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Good to see you. Love you, brother. Have a good day. Love you too, buddy. Take care. Steve Poikin in Slow News Day. Everybody go check him out. Get out to Pueblo, uh, Colorado on 4th of July weekend if you can. Uh, thank you again, Steve. You Do get that. Steve on out of here.